I hereby call to order the Jefferson County Board of Zoning Appeals. I will do. Uh, I think we're having a quorum. I think uh, Mr. Lake is the only one who is absent at this time. He's here. He's just walking in right there. Okay. <laughs> Mr. Lake, you're going to be the first person. Okay, so now they we have uh, four members here. Uh, I would ask the members to have an opportunity to review the minutes from past meetings. If any changes or correction, please note otherwise. Uh, I'm not the motion. And second. Any discussion? Okay. All those in favor, aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Do we have any citizens' input tonight uh, before for the Board of Zoning Appeals? Being none, we'll move on to the first item, which is a variance request of five feet on the side property line for an addition to be constructed at 1631 Ponderosa Drive by Garrett and Susan Cardwell. And Cardwell's couldn't, they're out of town, couldn't be here, so I told them I'd represent them. Does that not work? <coughs> Let's see something happened, went off. So they're not, so you're they're out there and I'm going to represent them. Uh, we had given uh, these folks a grants to build in front of a house about the existing garage, as y'all can see on the paper. They're going to add an addition to the house and the garage. And they, uh, instead, you know, it's supposed to be 10 feet offside lot line when you have a residence. And when they did the garage, they only had to be five. So now they need a five foot variance to add this addition between the garage and the house. And we get several variances out on the Nancy Trail. About half the houses up there are right on the road from the 60s. And said they're simply connecting the garage to the, the, the house. Okay. <coughs> the the side set back five feet. Technically, that would be of one principal building, and the Which setbacks from the principal buildings are 10 feet yeah. versus five for accessory buildings. Actually, this may not even become an accessory building then if they tie that in. Yeah, it'll, it'll, be, uh, it, it'll be attached part to the of house. house. It's part of the house. Yeah, so that's why it needs to be. So that so <coughs> is, 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 is a moot point for that one there, but they do need one here to, to tie yeah. that in. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they're, they're both existing, both buildings. Are they're both existing. So you looked at a lot of the okay. topography and such that you Okay. Any questions today regarding this? Everybody understand what's going on? Okay. I'll entertain. I'm going to motion to grant. Yeah. We got a proper motion to grant the variance of what, five feet uh, right there on the corner. Uh, and a second. Oh, motion second. Any other discussions or questions? Being none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. That being the only item, I need a motion for adjournment. A proper motion and a second to sue. All those in favor say aye. 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 I hereby call to order the Jefferson County Regional Planning Commission. Uh, looks like we have a quorum. I think all members are present except for Commissioner Lowe. Uh, he didn't work. No. Okay. All right. Uh, I would ask the members that have had an opportunity to review the minutes of that past meeting and any changes or corrections, please note. Otherwise, I'm ready for approval. A proper motion? Second. And second. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Do I have any citizens input tonight for the uh, Regional Planning Commission? I think I have one. Uh, Marion? Yes. Okay. If you'd like to come forward, I think that's the only one I've got. So.
Second, thank you for protecting this county from crypto mining facilities. Hopefully, your strict site guidelines will prevent the building of one here. Third, and the reason I'm here is that we again find ourselves in need of rescue by you. The TDA is forcing battery energy storage systems to come here. While I don't live near the proposed site, I certainly wouldn't be happy if one were constructed <coughs> next to my home. My first choice would be that we not allow gas into this county at all, or this state. But since that's not an option, I hope, you, I hope you will maximize protections for this county by setting up strict supplementary provisions in the <coughs> resolutions. I spent the last four months looking online for information and advice. There's plenty of information about the horrors of mining for lithium, but that does not help us. There's quite a bit of information about fires and explosions and toxic clouds associated with these battery facilities. But there's almost nothing about the long-term health effects on individuals who are exposed to the toxic batteries, either due to fire or explosion or in runoff that may contaminate our water or soil. This is because the technology is too new. We will be the case study for long-term use of this form of energy production. Therefore, I'm giving you items to consider based on National Fire Protection Association um, product, uh, uh, number 855, underwriter lab reports, FEMA reports, an Australian study, and news articles. I would also ask you to consider adding some of the provisions that apply to sanitary landfills due to the toxic nature of lithium ion batteries. And I would ask that you require a permit from the Tennessee Department of Conservation, Environment and Conservation. In addition, I would like to see a requirement for an on-site fire station with hazmat trained firefighters so our own fire departments will be saved from exposure to emergencies at this facility. I split the list of considerations into three groups, site management, emergency management, and liability. Except for this fire station, site Man uh, arrangement, rather, and emergency management suggestions come pr primarily from the National Fire Protection Association and underwriter lab reports. The liability item suggestions are of my own making. We need these so the county is protected <coughs> from bankruptcy due to lawsuits by injured parties or an inability to dispose of the batteries when, they're, when they no longer <coughs> function or are replaced by new technology. I would be happy to provide any of you with my notes and articles if you need them. Thank you. Thank you. Is that short? Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Uh, being no others, we're, we're going to our new business. And the first is a site plan review for a warehousing business to be located on Winterton Road and Highway 11 e New Market by Michael Boyd. Boyd Come on, up, please. <coughs>
what, what, what is the total acreage in this track? 20 acres. 20 acres. Okay. Yeah, right here it is. I'm sorry. It's right here. Okay. Yes, sir. And it is on that one. We cut off, um, how much were you having? Two. Two acres. Two point two. It cut off of the track. Yeah. Yeah, it was 22 total, and we took off 2.2. Two. And the rest is I-1. The rest of it's I-1, okay. except for the two acres that we left out when we rezoned that. Three yeah. house. Yeah. Yeah. These are regular um, automobile parking places. Am yeah. I correct? Yeah. 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 What about semi tractor trailer? Are you going to have any of that? I'll have delivery trucks, but we'll have room. Actually, they won't be some cars parked in that parking lot. Uh, um, we'll probably unload trucks where the lines is at and off to the front. Right here. I don't know how you explain it to but right here. We'll concrete around on two sides of the building where we unload tractor trailers. So the west side? Mm hmm. Yeah. Right. I think I've got it where it's concreted there. At all. So, like so are you saying there won't be like tractor trailer rigs? There'll be more of delivery type trucks. Right. It's all delivery trucks. Okay. With the you know FedEx tractor trailer like gotcha. FedEx okay. UPS. It's more of a warehouse. We uh, I'll tell you what I do if you want me to. That'd we, be fine. Please. We uh, we tear down factories down around Georgia for warehouser and. We scrap all the equipment, but all the spare parts that's through the building, they got warehouses where they put new parts for spare parts. We purchase them and that's where we store that and mm -hmm. we sell it online. But we don't have like public traffic. We do everything online. So it's all FedEx, UPS. That's the reason I don't not really want the entrance off of A. &E. That's the reason I'm coming off Whitaker Road, but I really don't need a public. Okay, so there won't be an ingress egress on, no. on Highway 11. Either. No. Okay, I didn't see one. I didn't. <coughs> uh, I'm gonna come off here because I really don't need traffic from the public. It's just a warehouse. Okay. Tom, have you, looked, have you looked at the proposed septic system right. for this? Yeah. Well, yeah, you got the system and then freeze out today. <laughs> Okay, we've got the soil map and everything there. Changes to, no, the, to no. the drain. No. Okay. <laughs> no, I'm just going to 
Yeah, I mean, it's pretty nice. That was worth acquiring. That's what it was. Keep the room covered. But we'll concrete around it. You know, we're the parking spots and the insurance contractors. Can you hold those? Yeah. There's another one. I'm okay. Any questions uh, regarding? Uh, I think it meets the requirements uh, for what you're doing here. So. No questions in the building. So it's gonna be gravel? No, it's gonna be concrete. Part of it's gonna be concrete, part of it's gonna be gravel. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'll I'll black top it all way to the road as soon as I can. But yeah. uh, around the building will be concrete. Mm -hmm. And sooner or later I will black top it if I'm off the road. I got a question. Okay. Uh, he's got a well, an old well down there on the place for me. Are they gonna have to cap it or what they what they have to do? Where's that well? Right out here. Right there, about where my name is. Okay, okay. Well, yeah. okay, so it'll be right there. There's a gate right there, and it's in probably 100 foot. Probably 35 your house, though? No, my house is going to be more up here. Okay. All right. Yeah. It's way down the middle of that field. It's not. It's, it's over here if you're looking. It's in the, it'll be in the west side, northwest side of the property. I'll be. I guess the only thing is if there's if, it, if the well there and the water was puddled up and it was from groundwater contamination, it would be better if you just capped that well off. Uh, it don't drain that way. It's, it's got better. a concrete. Well, it does not really really does does drain towards that well. We not run. Run. We just. I, I, I don't. I, then I wouldn't see it to be an issue. And the only thing I would say is that if you had a well and, and you had a drainage area and it. It's probably the high spot. It's in the high spot. Well, then I'll it's in the high spot. Yeah, I think that would just be up to you. Yeah, it's, it's, got curious. Curious. Yeah, it's got a concrete slab around it where they've had the pump outs on it. Okay. Any other questions? Appreciate you guys. We we got uh, we, we got <laughs> <don't know>. okay. <laughs> well, I, I, my three minutes was up. I thought. <laughs> no, 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 no. I got a proper motion and a second. Any other discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Aye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. you want to fix copies? You want to Down here, <coughs> back up there under the, the power lines, 
for his uh, leash lines up there. Right. It'll all be gravity fed down to this point, and then it'll be forced way up to the boat. That's right. correct. Yeah. Yes. And each, each side will be served by water. Yeah. You, you show the fire oh, yeah. hydrants. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I made it down there, and we went over. Each side of the frog. City water safety. Full hookups at each side. But there are no tent sites there, no primitive tents. We do have a 50 foot setback, which is the problem. Right, he's got, the, he's got the guest parking, he's got the office and math house. Mm -hmm. Are you planning on having a full time person on site? <coughs> or is it mm -hmm. a little late? Okay. And then, uh, if you notice here at the church, he is building a privacy fence over here. And that's correct. Uh, for that. And then the rest of the property around it already is, has trees and vegetation around it. Around it. So. It, this is yeah. This is um, proposed for the center of this property, and there's a lot of right. we've got terrain. That's exactly right. Uh, Bit of the terrain and, and the, the topo, and it's, it's wooded. The whole perimeter is pretty much wooded, so it's I mean it's a pretty private location. Other than there, where that joins the cemetery, uh, and we're going to put a privacy fence between that. And we have a right way that goes up through there to the cemetery from the church. We're going to. Talk to the committee there about putting in a gate so if we've got RVers that want to attend worship service on Sunday morning, then they don't have to get out on the main road, they can drive a golf cart over there. Tom, are you okay with this proposal? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we, we went down and went over all of it. One of the proposed sites. Okay. The site plan is going to be a bunch of people that are not there. Mr. Dixon said, I just want to confirm that with mm -hmm. you, make sure right. you're on board with it. Mm -hmm. typically states that if you go over seven feet it has to be an engineer engineered okay for the building codes and so you know it just really just depends on the circumstances uh, you know typically you if you have yeah, seven feet you, you, unless you got a seven footer he's not going to be able to look over the fence or uh, uh, from that standpoint so there again they, they just vary in size they really just there's no there's no set standard that we have for the height of uh, uh, those. We had in the rig, so. so it could be four feet tall? Well, if that provided the privacy, it could be, uh, you know. Uh, when you think about this, let's say you have a hill here, right. and then you put a fence on top of it, it's yes. four feet, then the hill itself, uh, I mean, that four foot fence may give you 12 foot of privacy uh, uh, from, uh, as far as they go. So, you know, fence serves two purposes. It serves people from ingress and egress from trespassing as far as it goes, but then also can provide the privacy as well. It just depends on how the fence is built. Also note that the ingress egress is right in the middle of the property, mm -hmm. on a straight stretch of road mm -hmm. with good visibility on both sides. Mm -hmm. Both in both directions. Yeah. I mean. so. And I think he on the fence, he I think he he, he coordinated this with the church and told mm -hmm. him that he was gonna do that. Okay. Yeah. So I think they were happy. That's more of a courtesy than anything, isn't yeah, it? Yes. Right? Yes. And when we get done grading, our property will be sloped down from that. So you're going to have a six foot fence, and then our property will slope off by another five feet. So support levels off. So basically, it's 11 foot from our side trying to look yeah. over. Right. Yeah. You know, yeah. and it ain't going to be a and just the opposite. It's just up downhill from. It. Right, exactly. Yeah. But the way it lays, the cemetery is on the upper side. Yeah. Okay. All right. Chairman, I recommend for approval. We yeah. understand that uh, Mr. Dixon needs to follow through with um, the required improvements. Our improvements. Okay. Any questions? Okay. Yeah, proper motion. And a second. 
Any other discussion? Uh, all right. All in favor say aye. Uh, any opposed? Thanks, sir. You want to do a call? We'll move on to the next item, a review of Lake Haven Cab Resort, the access road. Uh, you should have got a letter in your uh, packet about what Josh is going to talk to you about tonight. So I'd like to thank the Planning Commission for the continued support of our project. Over the last several years, we are, um, I'm pretty proud of what we've been able to accomplish together and very excited to welcome owners and renters on site here later this spring. Um, we have um, been talking with Mr. Seals and Mr. Tipton for some time about the possibility of bringing a new access road into the resort um, off of Fane Road in Sevier County. And um, as uh, we've talked through that, they recommended that we went ahead and went um, through all of the authorities at Sevier County and with the state to get approval for that. So we have that. Um, uh, we have our land use uh, approval. We have our notice of coverage with our SWIP plans with TDEP. And we have our um, land disturbance permit from Sevier County. So the road is engineered. Terry has done all our engineering since I became involved. And, um, and so that has all been through their process and approved. Um, uh, and the reason we're doing it is it's a much better access road and a much safer access road. It's going to be a better owner and renter experience. It's going to be better for um, emergency vehicles um, coming in and out of the resort. And uh, really the reason that I'm here is I'm asking the Planning Commission to consider right now we are bonded to improve Brightstone Way um, after we complete construction. And so that would be widening it and paving it. And um, if you go back to the original resolution attached to the zoning, um, that is something that uh, was a part of that resolution back in 2006, probably pre 2003. 2003. If you remember, I don't know if any of you do, but in 2003, the Planning Commission turned down R2 out there. Uh, well, it wasn't Josh's people. I forget now who it was, but they came to Philadelphia Lawyers, as I call them, and the Commission overturned it and rezoned it. Um, they were going to buy damage a ladder truck and all this stuff because they're building condos out there. Well, economy tank, never heard of them again. <coughs> so, in that part of that rezoning, in, yeah, 2003. Six. Six? Oh, no, I think it was 2006. But um, that, that would be part of what they wrote in there, yeah, I can't remember, <laughs> uh, was they had to pay. All the way, you know, Severe Cam was going to do Thane Road. And they had to pay Brightstone Way all the way back into the Thane. Well, anybody here ever, I know Terry and me and David have, but if you've if you been on that road, Brian, my goodness. Uh, it's a whole lot better access. Me and David went over there today if they could go through Severe Cam to the top of the board of the development is. A whole lot better. Now, what they're going to need from you all is something to send to County Commission. From court our lawyers, we they'll have to release. I, the think, I think it's got to be the other way around. Well, they need that. I to, think it has to go to the county commission. But I would think you need a recommendation from this body. We could make a recommendation. To we the, could make a recommendation to them, and it would be based upon whatever their determination have, was. Yeah. What, what I was trying to do was is that I was thinking was that I didn't want them to do it, and then them send it back to us. To go through my thing was I thought if we made a recommendation tonight based upon this whatever to county commission and it's still their, their call as far as it goes based on the information that they're providing us tonight that's all yeah, right. still be uh, your correct now he's also today 
John, while we were riding around the other day, he, he has no problem with uh, maintaining Brightstone Way back into the development. He's already made it three times better with that pressure run. Is it pressure run? You put pr crushed concrete down? Yeah, it's it's really better than I've ever seen in 20 years. And so uh, that he's he's going to keep that up as long as it's developed, like which is a plus, I would think, four or five houses it's back in there. <coughs> but Again, it's totally up to county commission, but I would, like me and Ron Terry said, we think you should have a recommendation to the county commission. That, I mean, none of them are going to go six down on Gibbs. So they're not going to remember it either. Well, the other thing, too, was is that, is this, is that uh, there's a bond in place to do, yeah, to do this sure. work. And so basically, whatever I'm, I'm sure that when county commission comes in they're going to do it but in our recommendation it should be that that bond should be left in place until this new road is constructed uh, yes. Yes. all i'm doing is is i'm protecting the people that have already purchased property in there that they they know that they're going to have a viable means of ingress and egress in there and that there's money in place to take care of that as far as that goes now you know what county commission does and what they say uh, that's we have no control over, but that I, I just feel like that if, if they choose to do so, and then we were to make that as part of our recommendation, I think that would be uh, very pertinent. Matter of fact, I, I would not make a recommendation. I could not vote for it otherwise. So. And he, he explained that I'm sure Josh will tell you, he don't want to be both, not on one. Well, yeah. he also has a letter in here, uh, basically from uh, Charles. Charles. Yeah. saying that he's good at this and I think he's happy with it. I think he is. He prefer it. Yes. He prefer it. He prefer it because if we uh, if we do that we have to take it over in three years and maintain that road. Mm -hmm. And you've been before the Sevier County Planning Commission with this proposal? So we, Mr. Temple we have a preliminary um, plat with him but they won't they won't give us a final for this until the road is complete. Understand, and that's the way it should be. Yes, unless they agree to take a bond or something. But it hasn't been given a preliminary approval. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Well, it's approved. <coughs> they don't let us plat it until we as built it, and so I mean. They approved the road. Yeah, they approved the storm waters approved the road. <clears throat> we got a slip on it, and but the way Sevier County does, we can't plat that out until it's built. Yeah. Okay. So it is approved. We just got to build the road, and, and yeah. it's got to be to their standards, and we have to as built it, and and geotechnical and all that, and then. Okay. But um, this will be a private road or public road? It's a private road. We're doing it to county standards. To county standards, okay. Correct. Right. They probably require that anyway for private roads. Yes. So anyway, that's that's good to know. Since we, it's not in our jurisdiction. Questions? Concerns? Uh, everybody understand yeah. what you said? <laughs> well, they, when you're talking about use or keeping up out of the road, is it going to be an alternate access, or what is it going to be? And I mean, I know if you've got a better road, they'll probably use it. But what about the other road? So if I'm maintaining Brightstone, I would prefer to keep my construction traffic on that Brightstone route and have the renter traffic coming through that new entrance. That would be my preference. Well, that makes sense. Yeah. That makes perfect sense. We've got the plans right here if anybody would like to see them. That's all in Sevier County. It is. I think it's like we'd be like yeah. approving these plans, but they're here. Mm -hmm. So we so plan on so maintaining Brightstone after the new road is completed for construction access so yes we would it, as long as we were using that for construction we would continue to maintain it like we have so in which case then if they continue to use it and, and as far as that goes then it would still be in better shape than it was before they started Way better. Oh, yeah. 
I, I invest quite a bit in that road every yeah, year. I, I can tell you. Well, I'd say this, since we, we can't, we have no authority to take action to relieve them of what they would like, but we can, I feel like it would be pertinent for us to make a recommendation one way or the other from this board to county commission when in the April meeting when they uh, come before them. And I told Josh, if, if for some reason we had a special call meeting before they we get it on in, I don't know of any, but you know, just quit it. Well, the other thing was is that even if that, I, I, what I hoped was is that however they make their, you know, it, time is a, it's some essence as far as that goes. So, you know, whatever the decision goes, he needs to know so that he can take some action. And what I was trying to do was is that once county commission made the decision, whatever they made, at that point in time, he knows the direction he needs to go. And he doesn't really need to fall back on us a couple of weeks later to come back to Forest to ask for the same thing that, that he's asking for right now. So, yeah, that's uh, that's that's was my thing, and I'm just trying to help help him as far as that goes from a time of constraint. So you're wanting the recommendation to include the. include the release from us if the county commission approves of it. Yes. So that he doesn't have to come back. That's correct. But to my time with the shared bond was if that yeah it, 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 in other words to me the motion would need to be stated as this is that the recommendation would be to the county commission that if you if, if this is some way you so desire that to release the obligation of Paving and, uh, and bringing right strong way up to county specifications in lieu of the new road that would be built, which is better access through Sevier County. But in so being, the bond would stay in place until the new road is completed and then uh, released. Released, and then he would still be obligated to maintain right stone as he used it during construction. I know Mr. Charlie doesn't have any authority on what you were going to be doing, but will you all agree to have him check the box? Absolutely. When you get the road done prior to the release of the bond? Absolutely. Yeah, and Charlie said he worked well with the, whoever the guy is in Sevier County that's him. Not like him. They work good together, so he had no problem with that. I'm not familiar with Sevier County's road standards. No, um, maybe you can tell me. I, you should know. I, do they require the, that they be asphalt with a six-inch base, that sort of thing? Or yes. you can tell me. Yes, it's it's in that plan. Yeah. 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 It's, okay. He had six inch, six two, one and a half. Yeah. Okay. But, yeah. A two-inch binder. I think Jonas Smeltzer is the similar to us. Yeah. yeah. Very similar. Jonas Smeltzer, I think, is the highway secretary okay. of Sierra County. Yeah. yeah. I was pretty sure mm -hmm. that Sierra County progressed yeah. to that. Yeah. Well, uh, one question: I, When county commission does this, <coughs> year two, whatever it is that Josh wants to come back to release that bond, they don't have to go back to county commission. No, no. I think here. once they make that decision cool. and vote on it, <coughs> I'm gonna make a motion on this. Okay. And I want it. It needs to be. Our recommendation is to release the bond at the completion of the road after Mr. Charlie checks the box okay. and that we, this board, give Tim the authority to release that bond or, and or you, whoever's got to sign it. Okay. Well, that was one of the questions I had. Or, or as or well. the finance office have to sign it? Well, it would be the planning commission. The planning commission, I okay. So that was, yeah. that was my question. So who, who releases the bond? The planning commission? The planning commission will have to release the so bond. So once that's, that's done, I just didn't know you'll have to sign it. It was finance. So we're going to take action on that tonight so they won't have to come back. Let's take action on it, correct? If I'm making right. a motion, that's the motion I'd like to make. Okay. Is it roll it all up in one? 
but the recommendation to the county commission that it be released at such time when all those requirements are met. If they vote in the affirmative, then it gives the planning commission the ability to release it and that authority would be vested for Tim to sign off that we do not have to have them meet. Okay. Because it could be in the middle of the month or whatever. Thank you. And that way he can just sign off on it. We're done with it. You all done with it. Everything. Thank you. Is that? I got it. So I get that is formed a proper motion. Second motion. And got a second. Okay. Just because everybody understand what what's what we're doing here. Okay. Uh, this is just our recommendation to the county commission over this issue and it will be before them and they but i think that they probably that they they've had a letter from the road superintendent and i think they needed to get my our opinion as well for them to make that decision okay and if they do the affirmative then yes the process is there once they get everything done and get the boxes checked okay. to get the thing signed off okay all right. So we don't have to meet. Anything else? All right. All those in favor, aye. 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 In your post. Thanks, sir. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right. The next discussion of rezoning in Jefferson County. Uh, I appeared before County Commission at the work session in the last meeting in regards to seeing if they would be would consider uh, us looking at the zoning for our county. And the reason I'm saying that is is that we've had several issues that we've been in here over as far as it goes, and so we have some people that that basically don't like our zoning, which was done in 1998. And so we have, as a body, we've, we've found some new ground as far as that goes. But then there again, our county has changed drastically and our land use basically has changed. And so, uh, you know, County Commission gave us a unanimous vote to say, yes, let's proceed with this. Because if they hadn't, I wasn't going to do it. I was going to waste, I didn't want to waste your time, okay? If they weren't on board, then I wasn't going to waste this board's time. We would just continue with what we had and, and proceed forward. But there are things that need to change, I think, and I don't know. And I'm saying that's why we're going to have this discussion. And but first and foremost, I, I just want to first. I want you to feedback to me if you think that this is something that needs to be done, uh, because we're the people that's going to be asked to do it along with some other people and, and the people that are going to be involved in doing this process. But when it's all said and done, it's going to fall back to us to do uh, the, some of the, the gritty work in this. And if you don't feel comfortable or if you've got reservations uh, that we're capable of doing it, this, that, where I speak up, man, I, I just want to hear what you have to say. What you think? Well, I'm going to agree with you, Mr. Terry. I, I made the motion to do it at the county commission, and, and as I said, there, are, you know, there's some things that we need to look at. Uh, a lot of people have said, "Oh, I needed this protection, that protection," but if, if we do this, we we don't need to do it piecemeal. We need to do a comprehensive review and and change of what we're doing and this this could be a watershed moment where it we give and there was a lot of talk Miss Sue about several of them they had a vision and they had this and that for the county but but one of the things uh, that we and Mr. Terry brought this up about doing overlays about where the county where do you want the growth where do you want the businesses? Uh, I think that's going to be important. 
at least for me, I mean, I, I, I think Lebanese is going to be, Four Lane Road is going to develop. It's going to have commercial business. So, and and as many corridors. And, and so if we put down, and I'm using that as an example, but if we put down, hey, we want, we want to say right up front, this is our preferred thing. Don't, don't mean it always has to happen, but this is where our preferred thing is. You're going to put in a business, you're going to put in something commercial, industrial, whatever it needs to be on a major highway, major road. Or you got the infrastructure in place. We don't want it on Free Pass Road or Big Bend Road. Or we, we don't need a factory there. We need it out on the four lane. We need it on 92. We need it on 66. <coughs> Run. We need it. You know, we need it on 411. Those corridors. Those kind of things. Saying that and then saying where we want that growth in the county, I think that's going to be an important task of what we're doing. And I don't know that there's any greater vision. And just David, I don't know if you agree or not, is if you say as a county, this is where we want our business corridors. This is where we want stuff to develop. And then you can go from there. Because if you head down Kingston Pike, Years ago, I can remember as a kid going down Kingston Pike, you got out towards Farragut, you was out there. Is that when you were running liquor? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. I can I'll neither confirm I'll nor deny. No sad work, But we used to also have been a lot of Chattanooga. When you got down, I mean, Dixie, there wasn't nothing at Dixie Lee Jones. No, that's correct. Right. Some things that you didn't need to go into. <laughs> Like that movie, like that outdoor movie theater? The one you used to go to all the no, time? Yeah. <laughs> uh, but, but if you look down through there, they've got, that thing has got businesses all along there. But now they've got development. Like behind it. They've got uh, condos. They've got a lot of stuff going down there that's developed in behind. But they've got businesses lining that thing all the way down. And as much as it hurts me, to say that let me will develop like that. I, I can see that happening. It may not be in my lifetime, but it, it's going to happen. That it'll come right out of Knoxville and come right up through there. Uh, but is that the vision happening. that everyone has for Lebanese? And well, I don't know. I mean, that's what I, I'm just using. As I'm just throwing that out because it, it's almost a case to be careful what you wish for if you're not. You know, well, I don't know where you put it if you don't put it on major art. Oh, I understand, I understand. Uh, and if we want to direct some things like that, then uh, a lot of these subdivisions are saying, oh, but they don't <coughs> imagine anything going into subdivisions. And, and I'm, they want protections, and, and you can provide some stuff for them if you do that. and then. You, but we can't, you know, if you're a hammer, everything in the world looks like a nail. You, we can't do that. We've got to, we got to take some time on this thing and get it right. And I, I just see it as a, as a good start on this thing because we are different than we were in 1998. For yeah, sure. I agree. I agree with the comprehensive look. And they may be some. I know there's been some talk. Uh, Mr. Terry has said that several people have called him about making a special designation for campgrounds or, or for this or that, and, and maybe a maybe a one's too broad anymore, Miss Sue. Yeah. Maybe maybe we've got some stuff in there we don't need and we can change. But I mean that's it is. To me, there, there's, there's really two things that have been issues. One is, is that people that want to develop for commercial, a lot of times they struggle because we can't get them, we can't get them approved. Okay, and you know, that's part of it goes. The other thing is, is that because we have so much residential development that are here, that's here now, that the tracks that are joining them, basically what they are zoned in, is not conducive that makes those people happy. So I know that one of the things that we'll probably look at is is that 
there's going to be a cluster of developments that are going to be outside growth boundaries that we're going to take a look at that are residential probably and there's probably going to be some tracks that are around them that we may come in and say you know what either we're going to take some things out of what that's zoned to protect those people which is what they're asking for basically or we come up with a different residential designation for outside growth boundary and the reason i say that is is that you can have an R1 inside the growth boundary because if you look, we want to encourage growth to go there, high density, more high density growth to go into the growth boundaries, okay? But there again, if you have an R, just a residential zone outside that surrounds these properties, that still just allows single family residential churches and schools, which is what everything else allows, then they feel like they're getting protected to a certain extent. So now, that being said, there's always the density issue. And, and I know, Chigger, you brought this up. That was one of your concerns as far as that goes. My thing is, is that you can have two different densities inside the growth boundary and outside the growth boundary as far as lot sizes go. So we could establish a different density outside, which means basically, yes, you're still going to, you may, you may get a few more houses, but you're not going to get just inundated with extra houses. But then again, that zoning there protects those residential developments and, and I and I thought about I thought about that and, I, and I, I felt good about it but you know the one thing that I always don't want to do is trample on the people's rights that, that they have in their property to a certain extent okay and I know this I know that people buy property basically a lot of times based upon what they're going to do to make a development and it may or may not be, I mean be a development that the people like but it's what that individual wanted to do and it met the requirements as far as that goes so I always feel like that, that you have those property rights and the reason I say that is this is that we've had people come here that have residential developments and they're enjoying a piece of property that allows something that they're not conducive of so when did we fail did we fail them in the fact that when those developments come in here and want to do residential developments, we should have said no, because you're up against this property right here, and this is what's going to be in here. But we did. We, we allowed those developments to occur for, for residential uses and everything, but I'm just saying that, that one guy that, or the person, whoever it would have been, that, that owned that property, they had rights. They bought their property, and they said, this is my intention to do this, and now then, all these other things that come around me, and everybody's against me and they don't want me to do what I bought my property for. So I don't want to trample on those, on those rights as well. So whenever we do this and, and make changes and everything else, there's going to be some of those people that are going to come before us. We're going to make some people happy, but then there's going to be some people that are going to say, hey, you killed me. You, you just took away everything I wanted to do with a stroke of a pen. And, and they would be right. We, we've, we may have, we've taken some of their rights away. And you know, uh, but that's that was the other thing. So I, I know that I know that we looked at trying to designate to help commercial businesses come in, and I think we should. Okay. And then the other thing is, is that the people told us is, is that when I have a residential development, I want to be sure that whatever comes in beside me is going to be suitable as far as that goes. Well, what happens when? We just keep going residential, 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 and, and eventually, uh, you know, we, we may not have any more uh, of those properties out there that we could build a, a, a campground on, or a country store, or something of that nature. We might run out of those. Uh, but uh, there again, I, but that's that's what we've heard, and those are some of the things that I know that y'all heard, uh, that people have talked to you about. So. We're, we, but we got to take all sides in consideration when we do this, uh, as far as it goes. But uh, I don't know. Uh, you know, I, I think it's. I, I just feel like it's time. I mean, I've been on here a long time, and, and and I've never seen more people upset over particular issues than I have now. And uh, so, but like I say. Uh, but it, but if y'all don't want to, be, if you're not on board and you don't feel comfortable with us doing it, I, I prefer you just tell me right now, and then we'll we'll reload and try to figure out something else. I mean, it, it's, it's a big task, but I feel confident with the members that we have on here that we're capable of doing it. 
And one of the other things that, that uh, <clears throat> when I say it's us, it's not going to be just us. Okay, it can't be just us on this. Okay? <coughs> so the long run, I, I've been, I made an invitation to the long range planning committee to, uh, and, the, and the mayor encouraged this that they also come in. So they're basically made up of commissioners. That's where it goes. So basically, they're going to be able to reach out and get what the public has to say for them. But I'm also going to use them. And the way I'm going to use them is, is that I need data. We're going to need some data. And I, I, when, I, when I say data, I mean I want to know data about everything that's going to affect people that live in this county. Okay? That's where it goes. And they're going to be good at that. They'll, they'll, be able to get, they'll be able to get that some of that a whole lot easier than, than we can. But once we get all this together and everything else, Hopefully, we can sit down and we can see at, at that point in time. And the other thing is, that we can't. The other thing we can't cut out is, is that the public's going to have some say in this. Okay, they will. <coughs> One way or the other, they'll have some say in, in what's going to happen. They should. And they, they should. should. Yeah. And they should. <coughs> but here's the, what I don't want. Okay, I don't want a few to influence something that's going to be for the overall betterment of Jefferson County. And I'm sure when, when the first zone <coughs> came around the very first time, I'm sure there were some people out there, some people felt like they weren't happy with it to a certain extent, okay? But it was new. Nobody knew what to expect. Now that we've had it, everybody wants, wants to, to know knows what to, sort of what to expect as far as it goes. So, well, I, I don't want to see this document become something where a neighbor or some group, small group or whatever, can beat somebody over the head with. I mean, you, we've got to, we've got to respect the property rights on both sides. I agree. And we've got we've got when we do this with all the input, we've got to figure out there can't be if I guess you said if somebody somebody's gonna be happy, and somebody's gonna be mad. If they're not all mad a little bit, Terry, we didn't get it right. That's true. We were right. If they don't all walk away mad. Yeah. We didn't get it right. I mean, you know, the thing is, is when, people, when people come here and speak in this way and, and the arguments get heated, I really don't get mad. I just feel like it's people come here expressing their opinions as far as that goes. You know, and as long as they're considered to other people, I, I'm willing to listen. Uh, or, you know, and, and I, I don't like rudeness. I'll just tell you, I don't like people that are rude. And, and so, uh, but. I think that's where we're at, and you know I don't know if we need uh, some form of motion or I don't know how we did it to, to, to agree to do this, but you know, but I, I do know this: if you if you don't feel comfortable with it, I just wish you just some of you just speak now. If you think it's a too big a task for us to handle, or something you don't want to be involved in, I, I'm afraid just tell me up front, and and, and that's fine. I, I'd rather you, I, you know, be honest. I think you're going to have to take the time, and you can't do this in a hurry. Well, it won't. I, we won't. I mean, don't put a time in it. And and I'm not. I'm just. All I'm saying is, is that so, you know we have to start sometime. Yeah. That's the only thing else. And to me, it had gotten to the point to where. When you get enough people that are unhappy with what, what, with what they think and what they perceive as what zoning is supposed to be and everything else, because you are right. Some people think that zoning is there to protect, yeah, it protects what you have, but the, but the other guy's got rights too. And so you gotta, you, you got to weigh both when you, when you do this. So. <coughs> and it's to help the county develop in an efficient manner. Yep. That's, that, that saves taxpayers money well and um for example the high density development shouldn't be way out in the country they should be clustered more together but um for example so you know you don't have that's but they that that was one of my things okay we put that in place and when you look at the land use plan and the thing was was to cater bigger developments to go into your growth areas. And it was almost as if you're like wanting to herd those people into this places here. 
And what I have found in Jefferson County is, is that people are going, going to live where they want to live. And if, if that's in a 200 lot development over here on the lake that's out in the rural area, then that's what that's what they want uh, as far as it goes. And so, you know, I don't know. <coughs> I'm not so much, I, I, you know, I look at the density that we have now based on the lot sizes, and I have no issues with those if we go to res in a residential area. And the reason I say that is, is because of this, is that we may determine that says, oh, because we just look at the acreage, and we automatically look at how many lots is going to be, and we automatically add up how many houses are going to be, we automatically add up how many cars and how many vehicles and everything else, and it doesn't work that way. It doesn't. There's going to be some guy coming in here, and he's going to build his house, and he's going to buy three lots. So boom, our our two more houses is already gone because this guy built a big house and he needed extra lots. Okay, uh, so and then there's going to be some lots that are going to be bigger in the begin with because we know our topography. You, you can't get around it. That sometimes lots just have to be bigger because of that. And the other thing that we just implemented, that we just implemented. That's going to me is going to be a big, big factor on lot sizes anymore. Is when we decided that you had to have a building site on every single lot that meets the requirements. Okay, so you may buy a big lakefront track as far as it goes, and you may hope to get your money out of it as far as you go. But the thing is that whatever you sell somebody from that, from that point in time forward, they got to be able to get a house on it, or you got to show that they can get a house on it. I think that that's one thing that's going to make lot sizes in some cases it's going to happen bigger, uh, just just from, from from that action right there. So, uh, you know, well, like I say, I it, it's it, it may see seem overwhelming. I don't know. It, it doesn't. Uh, I don't think it will be. Uh, I think we've tackled some pretty big issues here, and you know, and it was done. <coughs> and so. It was people from Jefferson County that basically sat down and set zoning in place for this right here. And where there's some different people from Jefferson County that are going to look at it again. And you know, who knows? Somewhere down the road, 10, 15 years from now, depending on how this goes or whatever, there may be another group on this board here that says, you know what? We need to go back and look at zoning again. But, but maybe they don't need to wait as long as we wait. Maybe we should have done this maybe 10 years ago. And might, we might not be, have some of the issues that we, we've had to address here at the sport. Does that mean there's gonna be things that come before us that we don't know what's gonna, yeah, it is all the time. There's gonna be new things out there. We've seen them, you know, whether it's battery eating storage systems, where it's crypto mining, where it's a, a body farm. All those kind of things are still gonna come in here. We're still gonna have to make those tough decisions. But what I'm trying to get away from is, is that every time somebody wants to do something, that we don't have to have knocked down drag out. That's that's way on to me. So and if you talk so uh, if you have feelings I I, I just I will, I'd like to just lay them out there and tell me. If you, if you see something different, if you are saying, Terry, you're crazy, you can't do it, just, that's okay, you tell me that. But you know, and some of the I here's the thing. Some of the ideas that we're probably gonna throw out there. The county, county commission, they're probably some of them are going to sweat, sweat bullets, uh, thinking, "How in the world am I going to get this through, or whatever?" But they, I, it's like I told them, I said, "Don't make us go through all this hard work and get there, and then all of a sudden, you can't stand up for it." Right. You speak of Miss Side of the Fence. It's time. Yeah, it's time to make a change. The county's changed. Yeah, it, it has, it's changed. It changes, it changes all the time. time. Yeah. So anyway, that's that's what I'm looking at. How's the process going to work? I'm sure. Any questions about that? Well, the only thing I know is this, and is that I say we get just get our maps, and we just lay them out here in front of us, and we look at the county, and we look at what's where where the developments are here, this, that, whatever, and say, you know what? Point number one. This looks like it needs to be a good corridor up and down through here for some industry or commercial. We may look at another corridor and say, you know what? Maybe that would just be good, not necessarily for industrial, but it might be good for commercial. Now, 
the other thing that you have to tell us is, is that, uh, and, and I threw this point out at, at the county commission meeting once, I, there was two points I gave to them. One was, was that we need to have the rezoning. And they voted for that. The other one I threw out there to them was, was that Dumplin Valley Road needs to be upgraded. They didn't tackle that one. Not yet. <laughs> okay. But here's the thing. Everybody knows it, so why not just say it out loud? And that's the way I looked at it when I told them that. And, th and they had nods, and everybody understood that there was a problem there. But maybe sometimes it's just a spark it needs to take to, to make to correct that problem. I mean, I don't know. And you know, and it may be that it, they say, we'll bankrupt this county. We did. But all I know is this, until you start finding out and getting the numbers, this, that, whatever, I don't know. And the reason I told them, I feel about Dumplin' Valley the way it is, center of our corridor, we probably know what's going to happen on the west side of Dumplin' Valley at the exit down there, okay? And I'm pretty sure on the east side that there's probably going to be more industry, industry coming in. And what I don't know is, is if we can get the industry or it's just going to be city of Marshtown coming in and, and make it to our borders on that both ways, okay? So They'll eventually run out of ground. They will. <laughs> they will. And that's why I'm saying, if we're prepared, then we might get the grain out of it. At least something. And, and, and you know, I, I hate to say scratch, but you know, but but, you're, but they're right. right. John Neal's right. He's exactly right. But if we're not well, ready for it, then you know. The good thing about what we're doing, we tackle this thing. We don't have to land the Williams. We don't have to give away the farm. You know, we we got enough stuff in this county right now mm -hmm. that it pays the bills, and we can be choosy about what we bring in, and we can bring in the right kind of fit for what we want. We don't have to give them a tax abatement, just like there's an industrial in Jersey City, and, and we completely went away from tax abatements with them, and we paid so much per job. They guaranteed X number of jobs. This was their investment. We divided that out per job. Each job is worth this much. And at the end of the year, they give us a, a list of how many people they employed average during the year, and we write them a check back in the county instead of giving them a tax abatement. Tax abatements are, they don't work because they don't, they don't, build long-term relationships. What they do is they they come in there and they run that thing to the end and then they leave. John Deere. John Deere's a prime example of what happened. Mm -hmm. People that in their building right now are not got the same kind of deal they have. They're paid on per job. <coughs> they said they're supposed to have 300 jobs. If they don't show up with 150 on that list or 151, that's all they get back. But they write their chip, they write their tax check just like everybody else. And they're good citizens. They've done well and they have been very, very good for Jersey County. But the fact of the matter is that if we structure this thing right and we are pro business and, and bring them in here and bring the right kind of stuff in, that's what we need to see. We don't have to catch everything going down through here because some of the stuff's not what we want. Yeah. One of the things that's probably going to happen on this is that there will probably be some extra meetings. And I'm pretty sure that's part of it. So uh, you know, I can't, I can't get around that because you know we can't have our normal agenda, and I can't uh, keep you here till. Uh, 11 o'clock every every time we have a meeting. Because here's the thing is, is that eventually, I, I, I know what happens. You're just ready to go home uh, at, at some point in time. You've heard enough, you got tired, and you, and you want to go home. I understand. That's just, it's just common sense. And that's why sometimes I just want to take things off the agenda because I just know you had enough. And that's just human nature. So, but there will be times when we will have to have some, some work sessions, okay? And which are less formal, as far as that goes, and, and uh, we can throw some really oddball stuff off the wall, and, and not, you know, say, hey, you know what, it's just an idea, and and, and toss some things around. 
But, you know, I don't know. I mean, is this something that, that we need to make a motion on for this board that you're on? Yes. Or you just, you just want to say, let's go for it. You just tell me how you want to do it. Everybody needs to jump in and have a say. I think we go for it. Because yeah. uh, I mean, we have to resolve everything in the county, what we need to do. <coughs> that's why, and that's exactly what John Neal told him at, at the county commission. I'm gonna, uh, Simple as that. All we're going to do is we're going to start down through there, I, in, at least the way I picture Mr. Davis, we're going to start down through there. And we're going to take A1. And we're going to look in there and see if things are what they need to be. And we're going to take R1. And we're going to take. Do we need to divide R1 rural and R1 urban? Do we need to have another thing for this particular thing? Does it need to go in a different deal? I would think that's how we start down through there. We just take it, we don't have to take all of them one night. So you're saying start with the, z the zoning resolution? I think we ought to start with a, with a thing that says A1 contains yeah. This, 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 and this. And if we feel like something is not fitting in there, it's not working, then let's figure out where would be that. Where would be, do we need another agriculture zone for that? Yeah. Is, so or it's, should that, or should it that does be? what it's designed to do, so to speak. Exactly. Is it still serving the purpose? When we have citizens like Mr. Chad here comes in, he needs something. Is our zoning law still serving the purpose for what he's doing and the county? Not just him, but but what we're doing here in the county. Does it further the benefit of the county and do what it needs to do? Will we get him in the right place? Are we protecting the residents? We're protecting his rights. We're protecting the people around him. Do we have the right kind of things in place? He's going to put a campground in, and, and Mr. Chad does a good job down there with what he does. But does all the campgrounds look like that? Are they to our standards? Is this where we want things to go? Those are the kind of things I think that we need to start down and do. Before we get into the mapping and all that stuff. Yeah. I think it should be simultaneous. Yeah. And I asked him, I called Stephanie today to see if we could get a big set of, of just county tax maps. And so that we can have those, when we have questions as far as that goes, that we can go up there and just walk up to the table and we can look at them and stand around and see, he says, you know what, look here, look at look at all these <coughs> residential developments, or look, look at the commercial that's here and just that whatever. When you visually can see it on a map, as far as it goes, then some things start to make more sense, okay? Uh, because, you know, it's not the actual ground you're walking on, but it, 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 it is a, a representation of, of what's there, okay? Yeah, we also, I, I think my GIS person can get us, really, can, they? Um, can get us the map showing the land uses in. Yeah, because they're each other each other. Each That's how it was originally done. When they operated in the different zoning districts, they used um, based on what the tax assessor had, or what the tax assessor had as far as uses of the property. So where these are the residential areas that need to be protected, these are the commercial areas that maybe need to be expanded, so on and so forth. Well, because and we could compare that again against what, what the zoning, um, what the zoning districts show on the maps and see if there's any adjustments that need to be made along with maybe the text okay. of the resolution to make sure that it reflects what it's well, supposedly designed to do. I, I know in the original zoning that sometimes as, as we went up the corridors there were commercial properties that were already acting as commercial but they didn't get rezoned. Okay. <coughs> and so we've always gone back and said, well, you know what? That store's been there for 60, 70 years. It was already commercial and stuff, whatever. And when other people then wanted to do commercial around it, that was one of the criteria that we always looked at. Well, <coughs> this guy wanted to do a store. Well, this store has been here 60 years. <coughs> there were times when we were saying, well, we, you can't do a store. We, we, we're, we're not going, we don't want any more commercial there. And I'm sitting there 
looking at it from a, from a logical standpoint, that doesn't make any sense. You know, all because we didn't resolve it commercial to begin with when it, when it was already a business. So there were some things I think that may have gotten overlooked. This time when we go back, I want those spotted. And I want, I want them in there just so that we can see what's there because think about it. It's been, look how many years is there and look how many properties have from the original rezoning have been rezoned and per se. So the other thing it's gonna show us is it's gonna show us our pattern to a certain extent and it's gonna show us what people want to do uh, based, <coughs> based on the rezonings. And so, where. And where. So that, that'll be more information. <laughs> There's, there, I think the other thing is this, is that what what are the things that, that impact the county and what is it that gives them their quality of life, okay? So first and foremost, if you live here, the first thing is that you really feel safe is that when you get in your car, that you can get on your road and that you can drive from A to B or wherever that you want to go, all right? Uh, now, the quality of life also means that when you get in your car to go to A to B and you said, you know what, I want to go buy a new pair of shoes, but I got to drive 60 miles to buy one because I don't have a shoe store here. But what if everybody said, I don't want to drive 60 miles, and some guy said, you know what, I'm gonna, I want to build a shoe store. And, and we come up and say, well, that's all fine, but you're not zoned for that. But we'd be willing to let you get your property rezoned because we think a shoe store is a good thing. But he says, well, that's good, so what's the next step? Well, in county commission, they, they've got to rezone your property so that you can put your shoe store in. Well, there may be a guy living there who says, well, I don't want a shoe store beside me. And so if he convinces enough on county commission to do that, then we don't get a shoe store. I, and, I, and I know that's a, that's, that's a silly example as far as that goes, but I'm just saying the quality of life is, is those people didn't have to drive that distance to find something that they wanted because basically the business was here for them to actually come shopping. The next thing is, is that, you know, when you look at it, all right, the next thing is people look at as far as it goes is they wanna live where it's easy for them to drive for an employment. Uh, right now, we're sort of a bedroom community because we may not have enough opportunities for employment and everything else. So they're driving to the adjoining counties. So what are they looking for? They're looking for an easy, fast way to get from A to B so they can get back and forth to work so that basically they don't end up having a 10 hour day because of commutes and everything else. Well. My thing is, is that we're getting a new four-lane road near the finished in Sevier County. We just got a new four-lane road going out toward Hamlin County, which helps that. We got 11E, we got I-40, and to me, the next step is Dublin Valley, which basically what it does is it says that Jefferson County, at this point in time, if we don't have jobs, at least we're giving the people that need to go out and make the work and come back here an opportunity to drive on a safe road. All right, so roads are important. Next thing is the kids, they want their kids educated and they want them to be able to get to school safely and when they get there, back home safely and as far as that goes. And, but they, you know, part of the thing is to get a good education is they say, well, we, if our classrooms get too big, then they say the kid, kids don't get educated, and, uh, whatever. So we're always worried about what? Overcrowding of schools, which in turn leads to more schools, okay? Uh, but, but, and the same thing. You build out in a rural area, you're there, as far as it goes, you have some expectation that if you get hurt, that the ambulance is gonna be able there to come and help you and take you to a hospital and, and get you the treatment that you want. So, there again, medical services. And we, and we talk to, if we talk to the EMS and everything else, he may tell us, he says, if we continue these growth patterns here and there, then I may need, a station here, there, whatever. That's what we, we need to know that. We need to know that. Because we may look at an area there and we say, you know what? This would be a good this might be a good place. And but but here's the thing. We may not make that decision where that actually goes. But I'm gonna ask them. I, I wanna know. They're the they're the experts. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to reach out to all those people. I want to know what, what they're thinking. I've done that once already, but I want them to give this information to you. And it's the same thing for schools, you know. Where do we stand? So what's, what's your plan? What's 10 years from now, what do you feel is, is going to be pertinent as far as schools in this county? I don't know. Uh, 
10 years from now, we may not need brick and mortar buildings. It may be everybody's at home on the internet and that's how you get educated. I don't know. Uh, I, I, I can't see that far. But all I know is what the present situation is. And they're gonna base it on that. And then what they tell me, they think is anticipate the uh, future gonna be. All right, so there you have it. Uh, that's, that's the data that I want to give for them to, to bring, to give to you, so that you can see the whole big picture and not just saying, well, here's a road with a commercial building. That, that's, to me, that, that, that's what a road plan is, uh, as far as it goes. I'm not, I'm not so much worried, typically, about where we were 10 or 12 years ago. I'm more worried about where we're at now and making this get to this next step a lot easier. And so when, you know, it was thrown out of at the meeting about, we think you need a growth plan first, we think you need a growth plan first, or a land use plan, I'm sorry. A land use plan and everything else. I understand that, but for me, the land use plan, I could write a paragraph for Jefferson County on what I thought the land use plan was going to be. And it could be as vague as anything else, but then it could be so broad that we could just about do anything that we wanted to do, okay? I don't want us to, I don't want us to be just put in the corner on, on things, okay? That's where that goes. And so that's why the land use plan, yes, it'll happen, but I think it needs to be important going to respond to what we're doing right now. So, uh, <laughs> the only other question I didn't ask was this, it was that. And I think our, we are in our legal rights as the county commission wants to rezone this county, they can do it. Okay. Planning well, Commission would be required by law to make a recommendation. Recommendations. That's what we'd be doing is making recommendations. But by law, they, they can do that. They have the authority to do that. If they didn't, we wouldn't be talking about that here. But I, that was one of the first things I thought, and that was one of the first questions that I asked from the legal department, and that was the answer I got. The County Commission can do that. <clears throat> so, I think that we're in agreement, and we'll, we'll try to get the ball rolling, and I'm going to try to get as much information and everything else in front of you as we possibly can, and uh, try to come up with some sort of a, an agenda, and tackle the issues as they come along, and hopefully we'll get there. Now, I need for you to write down because you see it just like I do, to write down all the problems that we've, that we've occurred in here in, with zoning issues and everything else. And if you have solutions to them, I want to I, I hear them, okay? I, I want to hear them. I, I, that, that's, you know, I, I don't want it to be just one side. I, 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 need, I, want, I need input, you know, and, and if you've got, and here's the thing is, hopefully, I mean, you know, typically when people call you and talk to you and everything else, it's it's, it's not necessarily, there are gonna be times when you can tell them I can't talk to you about that if it's gonna be an issue that we have here. But that doesn't mean that you can't listen to what they have, may have on an issue, say that something's not even on the agenda. You can, and, and, and you should, to a certain extent. Okay, all right. So for item D, I'm, I'm gonna take that as, as, a, as a nod from everybody to proceed, okay? All right, let's go on to item E. And this is a discussion of a senior adult campground. And uh, this idea was brought to me by uh, Chad Dixon and I told him that I would put this on here for review. Here's one of the things uh, about this is that when we start redoing this rezone, as far as that goes, and we redesignate some things in here. There may be some things in here that we may expand on as far as that goes, because we may look to see that there are things that are happening in other states, in other counties, or everything else that work just fine, but we just, we just but they've not been done here in Jefferson County. And so, uh, Chad going to come tonight, he had some things, he brought some things here for, for your review, if you noticed, if you looked at the books. I did make some stuff for you. And it was about the need, possible need for uh, a senior adult camper. Well, it's not just that. I just, you know, I sat in this meeting in November and I listened to everybody 
fussing about the RVs. We don't want transient RVs. We don't want this one. And I get their point. The location probably wasn't the best in the world. And, and part of that was a developer problem, you know. The developer probably should have had enough uh, morals to say, you know what, I'll build houses all the way around this. I'm not going to leave this piece in the middle for unrestricted use. It should have been residential too, uh, even before you sold it. But just a little bit of talking points about RV. 140 billion revenue in the United States in 22. That's up from 114 billion in 19. Three years, 23% growth. So it creates 700,000 jobs across the country, and it brings in a lot of tax revenue. 13.6 billion in federal, state, and local taxes. Is that the RV in this country? Is this the rail or is this the tour? Yeah. This, this, this is the whole RV industry. This is manufacturer, sales, service, campgrounds, the whole nine yards. <coughs> you know? And the reason it exploded was COVID. I mean, it just, you know, and, and, and I, you already see it peaking and, you know, it's kind of turning the other way. It's not as bad. But I listened to that discussion in November and I'm thinking, so I've done a little research. You've had 12 campgrounds in this county. I heard somebody speak about it that night. All right? You've had zoning since 98. Countless site plan was approved tonight. You're going to have six. So the one approved tonight is 13. So you've had six since 98. Well, you restructured the guidelines for campgrounds in 2013, 2014, you know, we said, well, we're not going to allow this, we're going to allow this, we're going to allow this. Well, you did. Other than environmental. Yeah. Exactly. But six of those 12 came before you even had zone. Right. Because, and you know, a lot of that's promoted by TBA. When you build lakes, TBA plus campgrounds on every lake. That's right. I mean, they just did. So that's where you ended up, and a lot of the ones they complained about were the ones that were built before zone. So since you changed the guidelines, in 13, you've only had three site plans approved. Three, and that's all, that's all you've had approved. So you're talking 10 years, you've had three, so you know, I heard say, well, we, there's too many campgrounds to Really? I mean, you've had three in 10 years. And the county's grown that much. They approved seven in Sevier County last year. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> if there wasn't demand for them, they wouldn't be building. Yeah. You know? Uh, it's a big tourism industry too. I mean, these people come, they bring their real folks and they eat in restaurants and they go to the grocery stores and they go do this and shop here and they visit all these stores. At the end of the week, they fold up a bill, fold up a home, make more money so they come back next year. Yeah. I mean, you don't got to be in one school, not one classroom. It's, uh, it's tourism. It's a huge industry. And it ain't just, you know, RVs, motels, restaurants. It affects, you know, a lot of people. So, but there's also a demand for longer term quality or bigger resorts. That's a big demand for it. I mean, the baby boomers are getting older. They don't feel as comfortable pulling these things up and down the road, but they still love RV and they love RV lifestyle. And they like meeting with other people and congregating and talking with them. I mean, that's just part of it. I don't know if anybody camps or not, but I can assure you, when somebody pulls into the campground, they get out and talk to their neighbors. If somebody's truck won't start, there'll be 25 people over there figuring it out. The first problem with the camper. I mean, that's the way they do. So. <laughs> but, and I brought some examples of some of these other places. I mean, some of these resorts, they come into a mount and they sell the lots. And if you buy a lot, then when you're not staying on it, we can put it on the program. Just like the timeshare, just like the condo. You get part of the money, the rental company gets part of the money. It's like an overnight cabin. So it's but, like it's occupancy tax. Right, it does. Absolutely it does. Uh, because it's, unless the owner stays there, if the owner stays there six months, it doesn't. But it's still getting property tax revenue. And you're getting the tax revenue off that owner sitting there, eating in the restaurants and doing this. So it's untelling what that tax revenue is. But what I'm talking about is not necessarily selling the lots, but people coming in here and saying, well, I want to rent this lot. And I have a ton of customers that come to me now that they live in their RV. They've got a half a million dollar bus and they retire and they sold their house and they're traveling the country. And after two or three years of running everywhere, they're like, well, we want to sort of settle down for a little while. They love East Tennessee. They'll come here and they'll sit down for six or seven months. And then when the first frost hits, they say, we're going to Florida. We'll see you next spring. <laughs> I mean, that's what they do. The, and, and they call them snowbirds down there. The, when you go to Florida, the resorts down there, you go down there and try to rent a campsite for a month in the winter, and they'll say, no, it's a six-month minimum. Mm -hmm. You've got to rent for six months. 
because that's what we want. We want these people that are coming from East Tennessee from the summer. We want you here all winter. You know, we don't want to have to rotate a million people. So, and, and I'm not talking about fish camps. I'm not talking about some of the stuff you got in Ruth. I'm talking about resorts. That's what I'm talking about. And you look at some of those pictures, you'll see. They don't want a roof over their RV, but they may want an outdoor kitchen and an outdoor fireplace on their site that they can use it. The weather ain't the best in the world. They can grill out. I mean, it's, it's, they spend a lot of money on these things. It's, it's a nice deal. It's just something I like y'all to consider. You know? And that's the reason I brought that stuff for you to look at. And it, uh, I just think maybe it ought to be something that's addressed in the new zoning and the new resolutions. So, the senior adult. Definition is going to be long term. Well, but not necessarily six months. Yeah, six months. Yeah, yeah, yeah six months. Not right now. Our regs say you only know, stay twenty nine days. days. Mm -hmm. Then you got to go move out of the conference. I think he's asking a senior resort like that for six months mm -hmm. before you run out. Right. So. Could be different guidelines for this yeah, than what we have. That's what I'm fixing. Absolutely. Asking, are they different? If we put that in and, and he wants to build that, it, it's got to be, you're not bringing your kids in here to school. You're not, uh, That's right. no. you know, the, the, the guideline, we can make different classifications when we do redo these zones. Yeah, they're not changing the right address. Like they're not they're they're changing well on the, pave all the roads. Yeah. And, and That's right. Know, which we don't make them do now. Mm -hmm. Just the first 300 foot. Right. So this site plan approved tonight, you got to pay the first 300 foot. You, all the sites can be gravel, roads can be gravel. What I'm talking about, it's okay, yeah, you want to build a, a, a senior adult or a retirement community for this, so concrete every site, pave every road, and do the landscaping, and put the amenities in, let's build pickleball pools, let's build dog parks, let's build swimming pools, let's put hot tubs in. Let's have pavilions where you can have coffee. I mean, it's, it takes a lot of money to do it, but it draws a good clientele for the county. It really does. It, it ain't homeless shelter by no means. You look at some of them pictures, some of them RV sites right there sell for $2 million. Just a site. Yeah, that's crazy. So, so question, how do we regulate that? How, well, how if, if, if you're doing it, you're screening it, but let's, let's say some development outfit comes in here and they want to do the same thing that you're talking about. Mm -hmm. How do we put in place regulations that allow us to do that because we've not got the funds nor the manpower to have Tim go down there and check everybody that they're mm -hmm. all seniors that they don't. How, how do we do that when we're structuring? I, I, don't, what do you I think? don't think if you put the amenities and the upgrades that have to be done to get this approved, you ain't going to have to regulate it. You ain't gonna have to. The price will rate. The price will take care of itself. Yeah, right. You're not gonna get. I'm, I'm just, I promise you, if I go spend that much money on each side, somebody ain't Tom Burke, he can't be. Simple as that. He doesn't weigh a thing. Therefore, you can say. <laughs> 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 but I mean, it, it, it'll okay. take care of itself. You know, and I, I kind of think, and I've been talking to some commissioners in other counties, it's kind of like, the issue that was brought up down here on the R1 zoning problem here just recently. And it's like, well, you put guidelines. It's the same, it's the same thing. You want to stay long term in the campground, here's the guidelines. You gotta meet. You gotta do this, you gotta do this, you gotta do this, you gotta do this. Same thing in subdivision. You're outside the growth boundary, if you're on the R1 zone and you want to build this many houses, here's the deal. Bring me your restrictions. You bring me your guidelines. You bring me, you're going to build a minimum of 1,800 square foot steep built house. You're not going to have a manufactured home after we rezone it. You can't pull a manufacturer home. You, and in other counties, they do do that. They do do that. I wasn't, sure if that, I wasn't sure if that was legal. Is it? So, in other so, words, a rezoning contingent. If your rezoning is contingent upon you're not putting manufactured homes in here. You're putting steel built homes in here. Bring us your restrictions. And if you go by these restrictions, we're going to rezone this property contention. I have a question whether that's. But you're saying it, it, it's going on. Uh, it is going on. Absolutely, it's going on. And not only that, I mean, big development cars. 
just cut it through. Okay, you're going to widen this road, you're going to put a turn signal in. Uh, over on the other side, you've got this has to be designated commercial because you're putting thousand houses over here. You're putting the market right here, you're putting this here, you're putting this here. And there's also a park that goes behind it. I mean, you want this approved? This goes with it. Contention. And they are doing it. So I don't know the legalities. I'm not a lawyer, but I'm telling you, it's getting done. So what's good for the goose? It'll create some nice developments. I can tell you that. Well, you know, sure. Speaking of that, because here, here's the thing we just addressed earlier when we were addressing the land art is that when you look at when they went in to request their rezoning at that point in time, yeah, they were willing, the county commissioners were willing to rezone it, but look at the commissions. I mean, look at the conditions that they put on there for him, them to do it. And some of them were maybe not conditions that were that we would have required from for subdivisions as far as that goes. So I don't know. I mean, I guess that stood up at the test of time as far as it goes. Maybe it was not legal, maybe it wasn't anyway. I don't know. Well, here's it's the thing. If you want to develop it, you're going to do this. If you don't, I'm not going to rezone. And that's what they did. That's exactly what they did. It, yeah. Pretty simple. Okay. Any questions? Any questions to, to Chad over that? And this will probably be something when we get when we start doing this that we will, we will probably address. Okay. So all I'm saying is, it, it, other places have it, and if, if you know if, if it's something you think would be nice for Jefferson County, then, that, then that's what we'll, that's how we address it. I think everything if we if we do this on the reason I think everything's on the table at least from with me yeah. right. I think we look at everything I agree yeah. new ideas included I mean and say yeah you're right and, and if you say yeah you got to have the conditions well, how does the property tax fall is it commercial commercial property tax yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, sure yeah yeah, yeah. 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 For campsite. For campsite. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. campsite. Yeah. Yeah. And then plus the other amenity bills or whatever. Mm -hmm. And then the land tax. And then you pay, I think you pay hotel motel mm -hmm. mm -hmm. But then if you was doing long term, you wouldn't pay that. But you still also pay tangible personal property tax on golf carts and yada, 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 pool chairs. I mean, it just goes on the long term. But over time, you the hotel motel. But so the long term being six months won't have to pay off. I no. guess not. No, no. The, the long term wouldn't pay that. But, no, I, but it's like an apartment, but you're not collecting anyway. But I mean, just for example, this piece of property I got tonight. So you take, it's probably bringing in five, six, seven hundred dollars of property tax money in Greenbelt. When you develop it commercially, it's probably going to bring in twenty thousand property tax. <laughs> I mean, I'm just saying, you know what I mean? No house, no no school, no road, no campus, no Right. No classroom. It's close to the campground, and they all vote from the station. Well, we got the school of the campgrounds here, and that's the very reason that I wish there's something I could do about it, but I don't want to keep it. I have to keep it. I don't know. It's it's either a sign of the times, you know, as far as that goes, but uh, that's the nature of the beast, it seems like now. Okay, all right. So I think it's something that we, we will address, all right. Okay, let's let's move to the next item. Discussion of changing the R1 rural residential minimum square footage requirements. Again, uh, and I think we put this on here because we requested it, and uh, I think that will be part of the things that we're gonna look at when we, when we go to, to, to this zone. I think it's going to help. I think it's going to help us rezoning properties outside the growth boundary. It's going to protect some people. But I, but there again, I think we need to look at what when we do that. That we, we do have a density issue a lot of times before it goes, and so it needs to be different. It needs to be different than what's in the growth boundary in, on the outside. But the R1 gives more protection. That's the way I'm looking at it. Gives more protection. And from that standpoint, so I think that that'll help, you know. We and, and I think that's something we'll probably do. I mean, do you agree? I mean, uh, you're, you're saying it shouldn't be either or, like it is with the A1 and the R1. They're, they're, the, R, the A1 allows a variety of uses that could impact a residence, it is. But I, the R1 doesn't, um, yeah. 
you know, the R, the R1 it's is more than what it is. That's what I mean. Yeah, it is, it is more deep. But I, I think there's a swap out. I, I still feel at the times you may get one or two more house sites based on the density or as far as that goes. But then, but you give the neighbors and everybody else there a peace of mind of knowing that I know what's going in here. It's either going to be a house, a church, or a school. Now, that being said, as far as that goes, some people say, I don't want a church beside of me. And then they, I, I know when they were looking for the school sites around here, those people said, don't, I don't want it beside me, as far as it goes. And then when some people say on the residential, well, I don't mind the houses coming, but I, I don't like particular brands or styles of houses. I would prefer you do something else. We're not in, we're not in the architectural business. We're, we're not, we don't get there. We're, we're not gonna be splitting hairs over, over things that issue, okay? So whatever the state law says is legal is, is, is what we have to go with on that. But I'm just saying that we can give them a little bit more protection from that. And I, and I thought that all along, but anyway, uh, you know, we, we've tried to, uh, stick with, with the growth boundary and, and try to uh, maintain it to a certain extent. Have we always done that? No. But at least not. There have been changes for it. Uh, you know, we've made recommendations, they got turned down, and then we've made recommendations not to rezone, the county commission has rezoned in, in the growth boundary. So it, it's a give or take. Uh, I'm afraid the county commission is the main problem. Well, yeah, I'm not always saying that. <laughs> they, they just had the last say, John. They just get the last say on <laughs> Uh, as far as that goes, I, they just get to have the last say. Uh, no, I mean, they're not. Also, well, you might want to look at expanding your growth boundary. Yeah, well, more. Uh, <laughs> when you're doing this, we've got a lot of will get you right square. <laughs> 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 hey, if it's <laughs> easy, everybody will <laughs> If they come in and they build a house on a 40,000 square foot lot up there, if, it's, if it were to be zoned R1, would they not want the same protections? They wouldn't want a 20,000 square foot lot right beside them because it, that's going to change the character of that area if you do that, is it not? But, so, but that's what they have because there's only R1. No, You're saying if, it was 40, if it was if it was already forty thousand, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Right. If you want to keep the character outside the growth boundary and you want to worry about the density, right? Then you don't want to change. What you're trying to do is just bring in some conditions on what that cluster is going to look like. Right. right. You're right. You're right. Yeah. Okay. So. What I'm saying is, is that when we, when, when I think once we get into this, this issue that we've got here that you want us to put on here, I think it's going to be addressed. Now, whatever the, what, what the final number ends up being, well, that'll be up to this board to decide that at that point in time. And I guess after we look at all the data and everything else, it's what we feel, feel comfortable with. Uh, you know, feel comfortable with. And the planning commission simply has recommendation powers and the only absolute powers the planning commission has is with subdivision regulations to adopt and administer subdivision regulations. You know, one of the things in the subdivision regulations highlights the problem they're having up there is at one time that was all the same piece of property. So if you build phase one, you build phase two, or you're cutting a big chunk, and you want this zone door one, and you do this residential, then you need to restrict. Okay, we're, we're going to give you approval on this right here, but you're going to restrict everything that you own right there to the same guidelines. It all has to be on one. You can't come back in later and say, well, we're going to put a junkyard right here in the middle. Really you know, I mean, yeah. you just need to be able to say the whole, the whole problem. To look at is, I agree. Is yeah. if, we're, if we've got a track and there are only there. And, that's, and there's been plenty of mistakes that's been made right. since yeah. then. Yeah. But I mean, that's just one way to help correct that problem. Is to be able to say, well, if you want to do a subdivision of phase one here on the first 20 acres, then the whole rest of this property is going to be residential too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. All right. Well, 
Moving on, I think item previous discussion uh, and continue to review the land use plans. I think that's going to change if we. I think it's going to come into play as, as we progress with this thing. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. In conjunction with in con I think it's going to have to be in conjunction with it because we're going to decide, basically, to me, the land use plan once we determine out here if we rezone this, 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 then that is our land use plan. This is what we're going to follow. Is some, of the, some of the proposed changes that put in the land use plan were a result of not direct statements from the planning commission, but from incorporating the intent of what we went through when we were looking at the subdivision regulations. You follow me on that? Yeah. In other words, I made a policy of something that the planning commission had agree to do with the subdivision regulations. The other thing, and I, and I say this was because I have the utmost respect for you on what you're doing with the table. That land use plan, uh, it's got some technical issues that needs to be well, addressed. I, I, thank you, John. <laughs> well, you're talking about the numbers. Of, the, the charts and the stuff in there did not get updated. It's yeah. not updated. And we don't need to pass that with those technical issues in. Yeah, so, I, 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 think, I think our direction is going to change. I really do. I think our direction is going to change, and, and I think that needs to be the direction for the land use plan for this. And now, you know, if, if it's good for 10 years, then, I, you know, whoever's here 10 years from now, I hope they look back and say, well, at least we got part of it right. Because I've looked at the, at the land use plan, I looked, went back and looked at what the projections were and where we were today and some of the things that were making recommendations that were made and everything else. In there, and I'd say 90% of them, some of the recommendations that were made, that never happened to them. <coughs> So I can sit here all day long and say, I see the problems in the county. I think we need to do this, 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 and this. But in 10 years, if that's what you're wanting to progress to and get to, and you haven't, and you haven't gotten there, then I, I don't know what, you know, it's just words on paper. I guess it was somebody's idea that this, it just fell in through the cracks uh, to a certain extent. So I don't know. Uh, I, I hope this one that comes around has got a little bit of teeth to it. <coughs> There'll be some other action that's going to be taken. To, to help it along, I guess. So, so like I say, I think that will, uh, if y'all agree with me, I think that that's going to fall in place with what a, the, the whole big picture right there. All right. Anybody else got anything else? Because I have one other thing uh, when we're here at other business. And here, here was the question that was presented to me. It's just really just a clarification thing. That I think we need to address. And, and this came from the, the county building inspector, and he talked to Tim and everything else. It's in regards to accessory buildings in the county. Uh, I look at the county zoning as far as it goes, and so it's this if you don't have a house, then I think the way you interpret it is that you can't have an accessory building. What would it be accessory to? Okay, right. Or let's say, for instance, you have a vacant piece of property and you build a building to park your tractor in, and you're in your farm in this land. Does that mean that's the primary building for that particular property, or is that considered an accessory building? Well, that'd be um, probably primary and agricultural buildings are exempt. Okay, you can't you can't regulate okay. building barns. Okay, so the idea is. I see question, your point, though. Like, let's you, say somebody's going to build a house. Yes. And they put the garage in first. Yes. To store the mold and all that sort of thing. Yes. Yeah, there's kind of a gap there. As well, well no, yes. what we've done over the years is they go ahead and get the building next to the house. Right. So they can build that garage first. Okay. I think it's city. Okay, but they do that. Okay. But they do that. They do that. And so if they don't build the house, they pay for a permit as far as it goes. The permit basically, I don't know if it expires or not expires. Yeah, six months after coming Okay, so, all right, so if they don't do that then, but we don't go in and make them tear the building down. No, no, we don't. So, you know, what I'm saying is, is that uh, I, I'm not sure that what is there is, is working. I just know that he did, he was looking to do that, 
he wanted to make sure that what he was doing was going to be following zoning guidelines. And he was looking for some direction and some clarification of what we had in the zoning. And when I read through it, I thought there might have been just a little bit of gray area or a lot of gray area. I don't know how you interpret it, but I, he was just looking for some direction. And I thought I'll bring it up for this board. You know, I think it could be handled like, like Tim has suggested, or it could be handled through a building permit process. Well, that's what we know. You know, what stipulations I think Terry on. Terry calling it, what if you don't build a house? Right. What if you don't want to build Right. This guy just wanted to build a garage, and as far as that goes, and he wanted to put a tractor in there, and he might want to put something else in there. But he, and eventually he may build a house, but that's not his plans as of right now. And if you look at that, there's a great area. to say he was 100%. could say that. Okay. So all I'm saying is, is if you look at, at, at our zoning guidelines, that could be considered an accessory structure. Uh, it may not be the main structure, but then if you just have land and you have a barn there, and you live 10 miles down the road, you need that barn on your property right there. Is that an accessory structure or whatever? I know it's agriculture, but I'm just saying it, it's still an accessory because your house isn't on that, it's not on that parcel. And that, that's where I'm coming from. So, I, I, don't, I mean, I know how the cities, they, they, don't, they don't allow that. But in the county, that I, I was just curious as, as after I read that, if that was the same policy. And I think that uh, Rob was just looking for some direction so he could let the guy know, hey, you can or you can't. Uh, so, and I, and I told him I would bring it before this board. So well, I told him you could. I, I know, yeah. I know. And the way it's written, I agree with you, Tim. But if you, uh, that's something y'all could change when you redo this stuff. If you, if that's what you feel like you need. Well, I don't know. I just wasn't sure about it. And uh, I, I, I read it, and I saw one, saw one thing, and then I, when I start reading the definitions, then I'm trying to determine when does something become primary and when, or when is it accessory. And so, you know, I might build a barn, and that might be the primary building, and I might come over here and build a shed, and that's the accessory building for the barn. I, I, I don't, you know, that's what I'm saying. I don't, I, I don't think a barn's ever been the question. No, well, no yeah. I, I know that, but I'm just thinking that, thinking yeah. that way. Okay. You know, because this guy's building this, he's calling it a garage, but he's going to park his tractor in. So, it's, I don't know. It's going to from a, from a accessory to a barn. That's that's the question. Yeah. Well, yeah. when you go when you get the deal, you go by six months later. There's a car in the morning. You know, maybe maybe five. Always don't tell you the truth. Everybody ain't as honest as you. I I mean I understand I understand the the, the reason behind it because uh, eventually it could get junky or just that whatever if they but uh, that could happen no matter what in this yeah. county as far as it goes. But uh, I think that's, he was just, he, he, he was looking for some clarification, and I read it, and, and after I read it, I still wasn't 100% sure which way to go either way. I've never really liked that part of the zone, but that's what we've always done. But in your opinion, you're, you're saying that any building other that goes on there other than a house is an accessory if building? one building on there would be a principal building. Okay. But there would be so accessory to uh, a garage would need to be accessory to a house, for example. If you had a garage, let's say you had three cars in there, you were storing that would be the principal building if there was a little house. Or, uh, but it's a little two bells of hay with a bit of water. <coughs> well, if you build a garage, you just put a 10 10 bedroom on it, so I don't want to build them for a bit. <laughs> now it's a house. Now it's a house. That'll pass. That'll pass. That'll pass. You got a residence. Yeah, because you can't build another house in that Well, at that time, I turned into a garage. This is not so Wouldn't you? I don't know. 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 I
Right, All I'm just saying is, is that you, you, and I hate this. It's like making new legislation for special rules or whatever. But if you let's say, for instance, you had five acres and you wanted to put that type of building on there, it's kind of okay. Then, then, then it might not be an accessory. But if it's anything less than that, then it might be an accessory, and you might not be able to do it. Because they're saying anything less than that might need to come under subdivision guidelines. And we got a board of zoning appeals that can handle this. <laughs> well, we do. We they do. can address these questions. Well, I've never put it in front of them all these years, but I don't know what you all think. I, I mean, if, we, if all I'm saying is if if we can't come up with that definition, then it needs to go before them. Every time? At least until a precedent is set. I think if you're serious about it, you need to change the rules when you're going through this. It's a big good time. I agree. It's supposed to be top here for a while. Well, the only thing I'm saying is is that he's just trying to get some clarification on the way it's written right now. And that's where I couldn't, I couldn't give him a definitive answer based upon when I read what was in there and the definitions that were in there, I could, I, I was having a hard time determining when it would become a primary and when it was an accessory. And that, so that's the way I looked at it. So that's definitely one to put a star beside we need to read. Yes, sir. <laughs> All right. Any, any next, anything? Yes, part of it. Well, I'm looking for that special time. Motion to adjourn. So, so, uh, motion. Second. All those in favor? Thank you.